Well, oh, be pal, my name is Rage, and welcome one and all as we find out whether Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate is worth your time. The short answer is, oh, is it? The long answer, the rest of this video. So, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, the latest in a long line of Monster Hunter games. Now, the Monster Hunter franchise is easily in my top five game series of all time. I absolutely love it. I have spent hundreds upon hundreds of hours in this game and I know it like the back of my hand. And let me start off by saying that this version of Monster Hunter, the latest version, is by far and a way head and shoulders above all that have come before it. It is core enough to the series while adding enough new and interesting twists that it just feels so fresh and yet familiar and lovely at the same time and it is wonderful. I've been looking forward to this game for over a year. Also, this game is sporting the largest roster of monsters in any Monster Hunter game ever. There is so goddamn many, and it is wonderful. So, I'm going to stop waxing lyrical about how much I love this game, and maybe go into... Maybe. It might not happen. The video might just end. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. And go into what is this all about, because you should totally know, but if you don't... You play as, well, a monster hunter, and you're tasked with going out into the wilderness and hunting down various gigantic, vicious beasties, ranging in difficulty from the basic herbivore who can't even really defend itself, to massive, gigantic behemoths that are larger than a boat that absolutely wreck your face, that you need siege weaponry to fight, and everything in between. Like the monsters you saw in the intro cuts, Scene, they get pretty ridiculous. The one that was chasing him for ages was the Tigrex, a sort of land-based wyvern that is all about charging at you and getting up in your face and clawing your head off and he's really fast and aggressive and he's hard to avoid and you've got to time your attacks really well. And then the one that kind of owned him and pinned him down, I have no idea. New monster to me and that is so exciting. There is little more satisfying things in this game than hunting a brand new monster. So why is all of this so appealing? Well, what I love about this game is that A, it is an incredibly skill requirement game. You actually have to be the hunter. When you are faced with a monster that you have never faced before, you have to observe it. You have to watch it. You have to learn how it attacks, how it operates. You have to learn its nature, how it likes to use its environment, dodge, strike opportunistically, and actually you yourself are learning how to hunt this monster. There is no handicap, no game mechanic helping you, no sort of handy dandy guidebook. You might as well be the hunter fighting this monster because you are the one having to brave it. So you eventually bring down these various beasties. These guys are just little velociraptor type dudes that mostly get in your way more than anything as you can see sent him flying off the cliff, which is actually something I'm going to be talking about soon as one of the major new features of this game. But yes, this game is all about you and how good you are. Yes, there is equipment, but the equipment is never really a handicap or a massive help because you earn your equipment. There is no way to cheat this game. You have to kill the monsters, carve up their body, get the materials, bring them back to base, which I'll show you once we've completed this mission, craft them into superior arm... Armory, armory, craft them into armories, just buildings all over the place, armor and weapons until you have the set of your dreams and are sporting a full plate body made from the parts of your favorite monster that was ridiculously difficult to take down and you can wear it with goddamn pride and precious few games give you that feeling. The pure satisfaction of seeing a monster you have been fighting for like half an hour go down to your final swing, your last desperate attempt after having battered each other backwards and forwards for ages is so 
immensely satisfying. It is wonderful. So that right there is why this game is incredible to me and why you would love it if you at all like this kind of setting. It is entirely skill-based. It rewards you for being good. You cannot progress in this game at all until you get better at actually being the hunter, coupled with the satisfaction of every fight with every monster being a massive fun experience. It's like an all boss fight only game. And then that on top of the fact that it is immensely satisfying to grind a monster and gain its parts and make a full set of armor, it is so addicting, makes for a recipe of absolute joy. So that is the intrinsic formula for the series, and Monster Hunter 4 just brings that back and adds so much more to it. There is an arsenal of weapons you can use. As you've been seeing, I am currently using the Great Sword, which is a big, slow, heavy weapon, but they have added a, like, polearm staff that comes and comes with an insect on your arm that you can use to leech essences of monsters. You will have seen that in the cutscene. And you may be thinking I'm just randomly running around this map. I'm really not. I am looking for my target of this hunt. I have been sent to see if I can't kill a giant insect that has been uh, terrorizing these parts. It's nice to just randomly gather stuff. You can go out in the field and you can find ore. You can find various bugs that you can use to craft stuff. You can find medicine, plants, herbs, all sorts of useful things in the field. You really get rewarded for knowing your environment and knowing your stuff. And talking about the environment and stuff, the maps this time round are absolutely wonderful. As you can see, Monster Hunter maps are split up into various distinct zones, and each one has their own little thing going on. And there is loads of different full areas for you to explore. This is the starter one. I'm still pretty early on in the game. I've not got a lot going for me right now. In fact, this quest is the first large monster quest you actually do get, and it is a brand new one to me. I'm actually a little bit upset right now that I'm not able to find it. I want to get my paintball ready. Basically, when you find a large monster, you can paintball it, which allows you to track it around the map. But because what we're looking for is a giant flying insect, maybe should be looking to the skies a little more. There is some stuff going on on the bottom screen, but really none of it is useful in any way, shape, or form, and you'll never be looking at it, so you really don't need to worry about it. The lock camera is there, but that's basically all you're going to be doing. It lets you nicely focus on what you're trying to kill. So... What is new in Monster Hunter 4? What makes it so good? Well, there's a lot of quality of life changes, which make everything a lot easier. A lot of things just work better. For example, reducing the amount of button mashing you have to do to claim your rewards at the end of quests. Just little stuff like that. And the main deal that has been added is the game is now fully vertical. And by that, I mean that there is climbing, there is jumping, there is aerial attacks, and most importantly of all, you can actually mount, straddle a monster and stab its head off while it tries to violently shake you off in an epic tug-of-war battle. It is just... <laughs> glorious. It really, really is. I really wish I, could, I was actually fighting the goddamn monster that I'm here for, but it's just showing you I'm just not used to how to actually track and hunt this new insect beastie. If I was facing something like a classic Raffalos or even the Tigrex, which I've hunted many a time having full Tigrex armor, I would have already found it, but this guy is proving a little bit evasive. See, when you first hunt a monster for the first time, it always starts in a specific zone, and you get a cool little cutscene introducing it, and for this guy it was zone 7. But because this is my second hunt on him, I'm having to just hope I get lucky, really, and be in the same area at the same time, and there we have it. It found me more than I found him, but that is totally cool. So it's like this giant flying... Stag beetle, as you can see, it's a giant horn that it's got going on there. And the thing about this is, yep, yeah, there we go. Because I'm using starter weapons, as you can see at the top left, my blade is glowing orange. That is the level of sharpness that my weapon has. It goes all the way up to white, if I recall. It goes orange, yellow, green, blue, white. And the higher your level of sharpness, the tougher monster armor you can pierce through. So right now, because I have orange, I cannot physically pierce my weapon through the chitin of this beastie here. However, the soft underbelly back bit, I can hit. So that's what i got to aim for. Now, fighting any monster, you can always chip bits off them. For example, this guy, I can cleave his horn away from his body, which not only gives me extra rewards, because I can carve it up, it makes him much less of a threat. 
Now, my greatsword I can actually use as a shield as well. It's one of the few special abilities of it. Now, technically, the greatsword is a much better kind of hit and run weapon. I'm going to try for an aerial... I didn't even properly jump off the thing. That was that was a little bit embarrassing. But just the notion of jumping off a thing to do an aerial attack, just the notion of randomly climbing up some rocks, is so alien to the Monster Hunter series. Okay, he's right there. I can do this. I can do this. Here we go. Here we go. Here. Let me off the thing. No, 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 no. No. Okay. Okay, here we go. Ah, oh, missed him. God damn it. This guy is very, very tricky to actually properly hit because you do have to use your aerial awareness and my aerial awareness is not very honed because of course this is a new mechanic to me he's gonna do his little zoomy thing now he's gonna fire his annoying little sludge bombs at me come on come on you can do it come on come at me there it is he's gonna zoom past hopefully he actually there we go there's an example of something else that's new in this game the environments that you will be fighting in tend to get destroyed quite a lot they really do and it makes it a lot harder to actually fight what you were doing so before he runs away to a different area i really do want to mark him with a paintball Though I also want to use this opportunity that he was firing at my feline companion. There is kind of sentient humanoid cat creatures which kind of fight with you and help. They're a little bit of a flavor thing, but they do have a lot of practical uses as well. Okay, roll, roll. No, no block. In fact, I've got edge block at this point. He is going to go for it. In fact, no, he chose to just casually do nothing. So what is cool is that everything can obviously hit everything. Did I miss with the paintball? No, don't fly up there. God damn it. He's leaving, isn't he? No, he's leaving. I didn't get the paintball in time. Where are you going? Where are you going? That direction. So I'm going to assume area eight. And just little things like that. Having to actually use yourself as the hunter and notice where it is that your prey is going to is just a little example of the really cool things going on in this game. So he is over in the sky. I think he's probably about to land. But yeah, there we go. So my companion there healed me up a little bit, which was... Awfully nice of him. Dodge that out the way. The thing about using the great sword is obviously it's a very slow weapon. And there we get the paintball, and now we can actually track him. I'm gonna roll out the way for the dash he's about to do, and you just get into these very, very awesomely interesting fights. So I'm gonna try and show you the great sword's real specialty is the ability to charge like that and do a much, much powerful hit. In fact, arguably the powerfullest single hit in the game comes from a fully charged greatsword swing, and it basically rewards few well-placed strikes over the kind of more spammy weapons that are in the game, like the twin swords. Now, I did just piss our friend off here, so he's now gone into frenzy. Every monster can go into frenzy. They start breathing out their mouth heavy, like you can see. The eyes will start glowing, and it basically means that their animations go on steroids, and they do everything faster. They hit hard and they're a lot more difficult to actually deal with. So you've got to be a lot more wary of them. Conversely, once you wear down a monster and exhaust it, it goes into an exhausted mode where it starts drooling and limping and it does everything a lot slower, which is a really good opportunity to actually get some damage in. Now, this monster will be the kind of monster that I can kill in like seven attacks really easily without taking damage later in the game, but the first monster is always quite the challenge. Nope. There we go. I'm going to bounce off. Fact, no, I hit it enough to knock it down, which lets me do a free, fully charged greatsword swing. Unfortunately, it did hit its legs at the front and bounce off. It still does a fair amount of damage, though, does that. You just don't get to fully pierce through, but you can kill something by bouncing off. So it's not the end of the world that that happened. And once you ground this guy for a while, he does stop flying for a little bit and lets you have more of a ground fight, which is really, really useful. Didn't get to block in time because he is uh, moving at serious speeds. There we go. I managed to block that one. The disadvantage of blocking with the great sword is it does eat away at your sharpness. You have wet stones that you can bring with you and it basically means you have to take opportunities to sharpen. A big part of the strategy in this game is knowing when it is safe to stand there still and defenseless and have a health potion, for example. Because if the monster decided it just wanted me at that point, I couldn't really stop it from hitting me. See, he is now exhausted. He's gone from frenzy into just being a little bit upset with everything. Some of his attacks are weaker. You can see he can no longer physically spit out the gunk at me because he just he's not good at him anymore. He's going to take frequent rest periods like this. And you really do get the idea that what you are fighting is alive. It is a thing 
thing. It has stamina. It has energy. It is a real creature, and that is incredibly, incredibly satisfying. Now, these rations are standard supply, and they increase your max stamina, though you can specifically cook meat and bring it with you, and they are much more effective. Most quests will start you with a basic supply of things. You see now he's walking away from me limping. That means he is very near to being killed. I do really want to see if I can get a successful aerial attack and mount, just to show you how that does work, but it does look like he's going to six, which actually is a good zone to do that in. We have a flash bomb, which will knock him out the sky for a bit, but I never really feel the need to actually use them. Later on, you get all sorts to take with you, various traps, various equipment. It would be impossible to show you everything in a introductory video like this. But the point is, the game is still glorious and everything that's new is really, really good. I need him to kind of go off down the side. I really want to deliberately not kill him before I can successfully get a aerial attack on him off because it's very, very satisfying. I need to kind of bait him to going off the side of the cliff, but because he is in exhaustion mode, he's kind of refusing to do that a little bit. Come on, friend. Come on. Come over here. Come on, boy. Come on, insect boy. You can do this. I believe in you. I be yeah, over here. Come on. Come on. But yeah, this is the introductory freaking monster. That's what you need to remember here. And also, the black creature that you saw in the start is affected by a frenzy virus, which is a new mechanic. And if a monster gets infected by frenzy, it's like they're in rage mode on mega steroids. It is brutal trying to deal with them. I may be able to get like a side jump. No. Okay. Fly back over the edge. Come on, you can do it. Normally this isn't the thing you need to do, obviously. I just really do want to show you this. Well, okay, my companion is just, he's just gone now. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. This is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. Jump, tack, hey, there we go. We knock him straight out the sky. Fortunately, we didn't get, oh, there it is, there it is. All right, so we actually have managed to mount him because of that. So basically, when he thrashes around, you need to hold on for dear life. And then when he stops thrashing around, you just stab the hell out of him on his head like this. And it is absolutely glorious. And there we go. We successfully managed to daze him. I'm going to go up to his soft belly parts and a full swing, which I just missed. I hit my own companion there, which is a little bit awkward. Now, obviously, hey, there we go. Down he goes. Now, obviously, you can play this game online with random people, which is a major new feature because before you had to pretty much be in the same room as anyone you wanted to monster hunt with, which kind of sucked. And you can imagine how cool it is for you and three friends to be hunting down a monster together. It's absolutely wonderful. It really is. They are the true highlight stories of the game, but the single player is still supremely satisfying. So now that I've taken him down, I am able to carve him, get materials off him, which I can use when I return to town. Fortunately, I didn't actually manage to break his horn off. You can't do it once he's dead, but I do love that their body is still a tangible thing. I can't just spam my sword through him. It's still a hard shell, though I ne nearly accidentally attacked my catty friend there. So there we go. That is the first major hunt in the game. And I'm just going to use this opportunistic time while the quest is ending to mine a little bit of ore from this rock over here. Now, as you go through the game, the materials you're able to attain get more and more advanced, whereas right now I'm on the very basic stuff. So iron ore end up becoming ridiculous ore. I mean, it's not specifically called Ridiculous all, but it might as well be. So you see him all twitching there, he's all dead and stuff, and then I just get to casually look cool, because cool hunters don't look at their kill. So you get rewards based on the monster that you killed. For example, that was a Celtas, so I'm getting some of his shell, and various other useful things. And then this is what my companion picked up. He managed to get some iron ore for me. Very nice. You get money, you get caravan points, which is like the guild points of this. Your companion levels up, and that was actually a bigger Celtas test than the last one I fought, and that is how a hunt goes in a nutshell, and that goes all the way up to ridiculous, crazy, difficult, just, ah, oh, hunts that are just so good, like, ridiculously good. God, I love this game. <laughs> so, yeah, you are looking at hundreds of hours of playtime. So here is the hub this time around. It is very nicely laid out, and all the characters are pretty damn cool. You're not here for the story, though, so don't think you're going to really fall in love with an NPC. So this is how the armor works. If I wanted to upgrade this bone blade that I'm using, I'd need four small monster bones and two jaggy hides, which were the little velociraptor-type dudes, and then I can make it better. And you see, in the sharpness bar, 
This weapon comes with a little bit of yellow quality sharpness, whereas my one right now only has orange. I could use an iron version of the great sword and get that sharpness, but then I lose out on the damage. Basically, most weapon trees have a iron or bone path, so a monster material path or a mineral path. So you have great swords, you have long swords, you have sword and shield, you have dual swords, you have the hammer, you have the bagpipe, which is hilarious, you have a lance, you have a lance that has a gun barrel attached into it, you have a bone axe, which can switch from axe to sword mode, you have an elite blade, which is a giant shield and sword that can combine to form a massive axe, you have the bone staff, which is the insect and staff combination, which is a really agile weapon, you have light bow guns, as you saw from the cutscene, and you have a heavy version of Bit, and finally the straight up bow which I do kind of like but range is very hard when you're solo because obviously the monster tends to focus on you so there we go and then in terms of armor if I wanted to example make a belt from the monster that I just hunted as you can see I'd need to go get some more wings and horns from it as well as some macolite ore and then I can put this on and it is obviously much better than my previous armor my armor has defense 1 this has defense 22 so I would hunt that monster for ages finally make a full set of his armor and then feel like an absolute badass it looks pretty cool as well the green kind of bone plating and these are the other things I can make very early on so there's not a lot going on here but that's how that does work and then if I wanted to specifically make a weapon there we go the celestial sword is actually made out of celtas which is actually kind of interesting can I make the great sword version yet I cannot which kind of sucks and I can't make the instant glaive version either so that's annoying but that's how materials and upgrading does work she's the person that gives you all the quests to go out and hunt this person lets you eat and get buffs and there's just lots of little ease of use things going on in the town that you'll learn with and little flavor things like this going past which I do enjoy and then the big hall at the back down this corridor is how you connect online and do harder quests with multiple people and then finally you have your home base where you can watch cutscenes that you may have missed, you can manage your equipment with your item box, and of course, most importantly, you can go to sleep and save the game, which is just wonderful. So, there is a lot to this game, a massive amount to this game. It is wonderful, it is epic, it is satisfying, it is worth its value for money. 50 times over and is the best entry in an already stellar series. If you're at all interested in this, I heartily recommend you pick it up for 3DS and it's just it's just wonderful. I'd love to do some more videos on this every now and then, so let me know on that front. But yeah, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, a hearty recommendation. I love this game. Mine has been Raging, but I like if you've enjoyed this. It really does help and I do appreciate it. And subscribe for more. For Poogie's sake, guys. For Poogie's sake. A oh, good boy. You've been